This is Myla Libin, Editor-in-Chief of Dizzy Magazine. I will be reading our feature on Takashi Nemoto and Mimi Yamasaki in Issue 6. During my three months in Japan working on this issue, I spent time in the Kanagawa Prefecture near the seaside city Atami. The area is known for its ancient onsens and beautiful ocean view, perfect for fishing. Once a getaway for city dwellers, including notable authors Naoya Shiga, Junichiro Tanizaki, and Osamu Dazai, who would write while staying in the classic ryokans, the area flourished with visitors. The elderly couple in Yasujiro Ozu's pioneering film Tokyo Story, 1953, take a trip to Atami, yet leave early because of the boisterous nightlife at their hotel. Atami is now undergoing a renewal after the 1990s economic crisis in Japan. With incredible museums such as MOA, Museum of Art, Adult Museum Atami, featuring erotic art and objects, and an impressive weekly fireworks show, the city is once again a destination. Part of the charm is the retro aesthetic, reflecting its heyday in the 80s. Snack bars with velvet upholstered bar stools and karaoke, classic cafes offering melon soda floats, and old school sex and strip clubs are plentiful in the hilly city. During one of my stays, a friend local to the area brought me to a building with a display case on the brick exterior, containing a poster made up of photographs of women performing that week. The advertisement successfully drew us in. As I entered the vestibule, an old man seated on a folding wooden chair next to a mini fridge sold us beers. We pushed through heavy velvet curtains and moved inside. Seated casually on stage, Mimi Yamasaki introduced herself. She invited patrons to sit cross-legged on a carpeted area at the foot of the stage. We approached and settled on the left side of the lower platform. A nervous group of college-aged boys, a couple seemingly in their 30s, and veteran attendees all gazed up at Mimi. Mimi casually explained the house rules, such as no photographs, no touching, etc., which she translated for me using the pocket talk I brought. She disappeared backstage and hit play on the CD player. Now dressed in a kimono and holding a katana, Mimi moved gracefully, slowly stripping until completely naked. She was erotic and alluring, while at the same time charmingly sweet. Afterwards, still nude, she sat and made small talk, passing out postcards for Mimi's 20th anniversary later that month. The front and back had incredible illustrations that looked familiar. When she told me Takashi Nemoto, the name rang a bell, yet I could not place where I had seen his work. I told her about Dizzy and we exchanged information so that I could later contact her. As soon as I returned to a Wi-Fi zone, I looked up the name. As a manga reader, I connected the dots right away. Takashi Nemoto is a pioneer of the underground comic scene in Japan. From the late 80s, he frequently contributed to the independent comic magazine Gado, founded in 1964 by Katsuichi Nagai. The monthly manga anthology, known for including artists that work in the heta uma style of manga, which translates to bad, good, has been an influence for many young contemporary comic artists. Nomoto's work is striking and unforgettable. Images of anthropomorphized sperm, veiny penises, messy handwriting, and shelves filled with his publications in the Shibuya Mandarake flooded my memory. I couldn't believe wandering into this obscure club led me to a quintessential and notable artist in the underground Tokyo scene. I immediately contacted Mimi to set up a conversation. Takashi Nemoto is radically political, peppering his stories with satire and surreal absurdity. He is best known for his manga Monster Man Boreko Lullaby, 
published in 1990 and translated into English in 2008. The story follows a mutated sperm brought to life by radioactivity. Often depicting men, particularly conservative authority figures, being humiliated and degraded, Nemoto's stories are not told through implication, but rather by unavoidably confronting the reader. The mangas challenge the Japanese values of work and national pride and the power structures set in place. His work is shocking and provocative to some, inspiring and galvanizing to others. Nemoto addresses the height of the economic bubble, and I can't help but feel that my chance encounter with Mimi in a city affected noticeably by the crash was fortuitous. Nemoto has gone on to create collage works, design album covers, and host his own cable access TV show, Funky Tomatoes. He co-authored with Manabu Yuasa two volumes of Deep Korea, a study of South Korean street culture. For this issue, he created two original artworks in collaboration with Mimi and photographer Miha Zore. In the following interview, I will be referring to myself as ML, Miha Zore as MZ, Mimi Yamasaki as MY, and Takashi Nemoto as TN. ML. How did you all meet? MZ. I've been Nemoto-san's assistant for two years. I'm a photographer, so we met through that. MY. I knew Nemoto-san's work through Gado, essays, and manga, and I've been a fan for about 20 years. ML. Mimi, when I met you, you gave me your postcard, and it was one of Nemoto's illustrations. So it was kind of a moment of fate. I've been getting Gado at Mandarake since I started coming to Japan, so I recognized his drawing. Did you ask Nemoto to work with you on illustrations? MY. I wanted to create something special for my 20th year of becoming a stripper. ML. What was your first reaction to seeing his work 20 years ago? MY. It was a shocking experience I can't explain. ML. Was it different from other manga? MY. It was a thrilling feeling. ML. Nemoto-san, when you started making manga, I know that Teruhiko Yumoto was a source of influence for you. Were there other artists working with a similar style and attitude? Was your work a rejection of any specific manga coming out at that time? TN. Well, you know there are people that are really good at drawing to begin with. People think you have to be really good at drawing if you want to be a manga artist. For me, it was more about being a part of Gado than becoming a manga artist. ML. So you already knew about Gado and you thought, this is what I want to be a part of. TN. Yes, but in order to be a part of Gado, it's a manga magazine, so you have to create manga. But the mainstream manga style at the time was dominated by perfect images, like the style that Yoshiharu Tsuge was drawing. Everyone, including me, thought that was the only way it could be. So when I saw Yumura-san's work, I realized that it didn't have to be that way that my work had potential as is. ML. Did you go to school for art? TN. No, I didn't. ML. Were you like, I'm not even going to try to be super technical? TN. Of course, I didn't have any technical skills, so it was like playing in a new wave band. The Ramones and the Sex Pistols weren't technical. Manga drawn by Yumura-san was just like that. It was as if he threw away every stereotype and was just drawing what he wanted to in his own way. ML. It sounds like you have influence from European music and American music. How were you exposed to that? TN. I guess if you're looking for unusual music, you eventually find things like that. ML. It seems like you were anti-authority and political from a very young age. TN. I felt more comfortable that way. ML. Was your anti-authoritarianism and political mindset reflective of your parents or other adults around you? TN. 
It's difficult to simply put it, but I started to realize that I was influenced by my parents only after living for more than 50 years. He laughs. ML. We always start to realize later. We don't want to, but we do. Was it hard to get your work published in Japan? I know that Gato supported independent manga artists that were making controversial works. TN. The first manga I ever drew was published. Japan's economy was soaring at the time, so anything that got published was profitable, no matter what it was, to think back at it now. He laughs. Now it's hard to get a serial column, even if you're a part of Gato. But at that time, there were so many more opportunities to be in magazines that weren't comic-related. ML. That's interesting. Now, manga is more accepted by the mainstream. It's harder for artists. Is it because there are more artists? TN. While the number of publications decline, the industry itself is shrinking and everyone is moving online. It's very hard to earn money from the online manga industry. That's why more and more people are quitting being manga artists now, even people at my age. ML. I know that many mangas make their way into anime or TV shows. Do you think this situation makes it harder now? TN. Gato's style is quite different from that, he laughs. There are always talks to make films from my manga, but they're very difficult to realize. ML. Is that because of the style of your work or content? TN. I think it's both. Certain types of people, like Mimi-san, tell me they like my work. But people like those walking on the street over there, I'm sure it would upset some of them. He laughs. M-Y. But I love it. M-L. Me too. When did your work start being seen by a wider audience? TN. Well, I've been doing this for about 40 years, so just little by little. MZ. Most recently, I think Juke Guy helped spread his work a little. ML. Do you think in America, your style of manga is more accepted? TN. That's not necessarily the case. Oh, but five years ago, Paquito Bolino organized events with the theater called Le Dernier Cri in France. The event in Marseille was mainly about Gato, and the one in Set was about Heta Uma drawings. We exhibited at two contemporary museums and did live mural drawings too. ML. I read in an interview that you consider yourself Heta Heta. TN. The Uma in Heta Uma means good, and I was being Japanese and modest, so I didn't want to praise myself. Surprisingly, Yoshikazu Ibisu carries a strong Heta Uma DNA inherited from Yumura-san. Others just say they're Heta Uma style, but they are actually good illustrators trying to draw badly. But Ibisu and I have been drawing badly for over 40 years. If anyone has been drawing for 40 years, your drawings are bound to become good at some point. Also, Yumura-san himself is good at drawing to begin with, in the general public sense. He's even trained in drawing. I'm sure there was history before he reached his Heta Uma point because it requires a lot of skill for a gifted and trained illustrator to draw badly. Yumura-san has continued to consciously draw badly for over 45 years. No matter how bad anyone is at drawing in the beginning, it's inevitable to avoid becoming good at drawing if you do it every day for that long. If you're not careful enough, you will get better and better and subconsciously start drawing better, and at some point, it becomes easier to draw as well. ML. It's interesting because it is almost similar to somebody trying really hard to be good. It's the same effort you're putting into the work. TN. Even though it may look like a bad drawing, there is a sort of unexplainable fascinating charm in them. This is what's important more than the technique. ML. Your work makes some people very happy, but others may be offended or uncomfortable. I'm curious where your mind is at when you're creating. Does a part of you want to make people uncomfortable, or is this just how you see the world? TN. When I was young, I did think about making people uncomfortable. In fact, I was doing it indiscriminately back then. 
It's not like I don't have those intentions now, but I think about when and where is appropriate for me to do so. ML. If you look at your illustrations, one of the most realistic images are the penises. In most of Japan, they are blurred out, even in porn, so I think that's interesting that it's the most realistic part, opposed to the rest of the illustrations being more in a particular style. TN. Well, us Heta Uma illustrators have been overlooked because it looks like our drawings are so sloppy. He laughs. It's like reverse discrimination, but it worked in our favor and we've been getting away with it for over 40 years. MZ. Many people draw penises in Heta Uma style, but what's interesting about Nemoto-san's work is that he draws more sperm than penises. ML. Oh, the radioactive sperm. What do you think about that? The final act. I laugh. Why do you use sperm instead of the penis? TN. I find it interesting. Sperm can nicely fill the blank spaces in my drawings. He laughs. ML. Have you noticed changes in not just the readers in manga, but the people making them? Maybe more people are trying to do this visual style, but do you think this kind of radical style is still being made in Japan? TN. I don't think anyone new has tried. When it comes to my Heta Uma style, I think I'm the only one in the world that can continue to do it. MZ. Some people do try to draw similarly, but none of them have become known. ML. Tell me about your other projects, which include your band, Korean street culture publication, and cable access TV show, Funky Tomatoes. Do these projects, which are using many different mediums, feel like extensions of each other and your manga? TN. It's all the same to me, but the expression always changes. ML. Do you feel like you still have a community of artists around you? Was it stronger when you were younger? TN. I feel like my community changed over time. I used to work with more illustrators or manga artists, but I work with more people from different genres now. ML. Mimi, I want to ask you a few questions. Your work is a little different than a typical stripper, more of an art or performance. What drew you to that kind of style rather than the more modern stripping? MY. It's a retro and really old Japanese stripping style. More than flashy lights and new spaces, I gravitate towards the more mysterious, weird, and slightly dangerous back alleys. I guess that's kind of why. ML. I met you when you performed in Atami, and I hadn't been to that kind of strip club before. And it was so cool because it felt more like theater. I don't think there's as many of these kinds of clubs. MY. There used to be many all over Japan, but now more and more places are closing. ML. What were you influenced by when you were younger that made you interested in these kinds of performances? MY. When I was young, I used to be sick and weak, and my parents were very strict. I wasn't allowed to dance or even watch comedy shows on TV, so I think I was more oppressed than other kids. But when I entered high school, I wanted to do all the things I wasn't allowed to do. See the erotic world, watch love scenes, get tattoos, and paint my nails red. ML. Do you think that kind of performing will exist in 20 years? MY. I think so. ML. And Nemoto-san, do you think your style of illustration will exist 20 years from now? TN. Yes, as long as I continue to live. He laughs. In this feature, the artwork is courtesy of the artist, photography by Myla Lippin, and translation by Reiko Lux. On the first page, with the English translation of the introduction, the border is black and white scans from Takashi Nemoto's graphic novels or manga, and Takashi Nemoto and Mimi Yamasaki's names are typed in red circles with black borders. The next page is a very colorful painting by Nemoto titled 
I am going to live. Even if everyone dies, I will live alone. It is from 2019, an acrylic on canvas, 179 by 149 inches. There is a man reading a book, a shark, birds, skulls. He is stepping on a skeleton of another man. The environment seems to be an island with a palm tree with severed heads as coconuts and a fluorescent pink sand with blue water. On the next page with the Japanese translation of the introduction, there is a portrait of Takashi Nemoto and Mimi Yamasaki. Nemoto's portrait is completely orange and Mimi Yamasaki's portrait is pink. On the following page is another painting by Nemoto titled Akanbe, Monks Who Like the Rolling Stones, from 2019, acrylic on canvas, 570 by 605 inches. It's a few faces with the Rolling Stones classic lips with the tongue out. In the background, there are sperm filling the blank spaces, a fish with a human head, and penises. The figures are holding their hands in prayer and wear beads around their neck. The next page has a painting by Nemoto-san titled Upside Down Man. Even a man upside down can be a boss from 2019. Acrylic on canvas, 570 by 605 inches. In the foreground is a man painted in yellow with a penis for a nose, black sunglasses, and a foot for a hand. He is wearing a watch and black underwear with a head coming out of them. One of his feet hold chopsticks picking up a fish. In the background behind a shoji screen is another man holding a bloody knife. We see again sperm filling the blank spaces coming out of the penis nose. One of them turns into a face. There's other abstract forms and creatures made up of different animals, faces, and sperm. In the right corner is a turtle with a human face. There are speech bubbles with Japanese text coming from both of the men. The next spread has the two collages that were made uniquely for this issue in collaboration with Takashi Nemoto, who did the painting, Miha Zore, who took the photographs, Mimi Yamasaki, Jun Sagawa, and Maran as the models. It is acrylic on photo print, untitled, from 2020. Both of the works feature photos of Mimi Yamasaki naked with her legs spread. Takashi Nemoto paints over them with various faces, sperm, and collaged images. The colors are fluorescent and bright, including pink and yellow. In both artworks, their faces are all obstructed by black ink. The collage on the left side of the spread has the other two models sitting next to Mimi Yamasaki. The collage on the right side of the page is just Mimi Yamasaki. The next artwork is titled Drugs Since Adulthood, Children Don't Have to Take Drugs, from 2019, acrylic on canvas, 208.8 by 179 inches. In the center is a man making an angry face, injecting himself with a needle. A painting of a puppy jumps up at his arm. To his right is a tree with a monkey hanging off of it, a yellow panda, some anthropomorphized sperm. On the left side of him is a pink and white sun. Some other figures, including a man with yellow hair standing next to a small boy holding a toy car, a bunny, cat, and the background is black sperm on blue. At the bottom is half human, half turtle, staring up at the figure in the center. 
There are other skulls and various creatures, including birds and turtles. There is vertical Japanese text going down the right side of the painting, which is the translation of the title in Japanese. On the following page, we have scans of covers of Takashi Nemoto's graphic novels, including Meimei from 2004 and Kurozushi from 1997. They are all intricate abstract paintings of anthropomorphized sperm with the titles on them. Mei Mei is mostly in darker muted green tones, whereas Kurozushi is in brighter pinks, reds, and yellows. On the last page of the feature is an excerpt from Monster Men Bareko Lullaby from 1990. The strip is read from right to left, and this is the text. An anthropomorphized sperm says, Gulp, don't give me your shit. In the next panel, he's looking down at his cup with a thought bubble and two ellipses. In the next panel, he is looking again at the cup and saying, Ah... The next panel shows him speaking to now what we see as a few men in a bar. He says, ah, but life is wonderful. In the last panel, he says, there is an emptiness in every life and we all try to fill it. This need creates personality and the stronger our feelings of emptiness, the warmer our feelings towards each other.